Focus on the future. Man, I love what somebody said. They said, you ought to be excited about the future. You know why? You're going to spend the rest of your life there. Focus on the future. Just focus on the, on the future. The key to forgetting is refocusing. Focus on the future. It is a universal law. When you focus on one thing, you tend to forget something else. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I do. Maybe this will help you. I keep, by my cal- I keep by my Bible a calendar. And every morning when you get up and you get your cup of coffee and you sit down with your dog and you, and you have your copy and read your Bible, you also look at your calendar. And you look at your calendar and you think, okay, today is May the 30th. What do I have today? And you think about it. And you pray about that day. And you say, this is a day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a great day. I'm going to serve somebody. And I'm, going to be, I'm going to be a blessing to somebody. And I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to receive from God. And I'm going to give out. I'm going to be a channel for God today. And just pray about that day. And claim that day. And then don't stop there. Look at tomorrow. Look at down through the week. And think of your week. And say, this is going to be an awesome week. This is going to be one of the greatest weeks of my life. It's just going to be awesome. And I look at those little squares on the calendar and I say, I wonder what that square is going to be like. Each square is a day, you know. I wonder what Friday will be like. I wonder if something really exciting is going to happen in my life. God, what's going to happen? What door are you going to open? What door of opportunity? Look at next month. Turn the page. Look at. We're thinking about all through the summer. We're thinking about this fall. We're thinking about December and Christmas. And we're thinking about 2011. And, and uh, we're thinking about, oh, my lands, you know. I mean, these young ladies do that. I got asked to do a wedding in June of 2011 already, you know. <laughs> and, so, and so, you know, uh, there are some people that are way ahead of us, you know. Look at tomorrow. Face the future. This is a simple little truth, but I want to tell you something. I have more people that are still talking about the past and still can't get over what somebody did to them or can't get over what they did, can't forgive somebody else or can't forgive themselves, can't, you know, I regret and I, you know, listen, everybody here has regrets. Everybody here. I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't said that. I wish I hadn't, you know. But we can't look back. We look forward and we're excited about tomorrow. And we're excited about what God is saying here the rest of your life. And that's what he's talking to us about from this time forward he's talking about live the rest of the time he's talking about and so forgive focus face the future number four it is in verse eight read this verse eight with me um i I skipped verse seven didn't i i didn't read verse seven i just realized that let's go back and read verse seven before we go to verse eight we're going too fast here and uh, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be of some same sound mind, of sober spirit, for the purpose of prayer. The end of all things is near. Now, that was written 2,000 years ago. You say, Pastor Carl, didn't they know what was going on? The end of things wasn't near. Listen, since Jesus came forth from the tomb, God has says we are living in the last days. <laughs> you know why? Because Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. He didn't tell us when he's coming. In fact, he said, watch, be alert. No man knows the day nor the time. And so the end is near. It could be today. No one knows when Christ is coming, but we know this for sure. He's coming. And so the end is near. And it could be today. And so face the future. Look to the future. And... uh, Number eight, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another 
because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Number four, fervently love one another. God says, you want to make your life count? Be a person of love. I took a red ink pen and I underlined two words here, above all. Man, when God says above all, you dead sure know that's important. Above all other things I'm telling you, God says, love. I underlined those three words in red ink, above all love. (laughs) In fact, he said fervently love. It means with intensity. Fervently love. Because love covers a multitude of sins. And you and I live in a sinful world. And somebody's going to sin against you and hurt you. And the only way you can forgive is with the love of God in your heart. Above all, love. Look at this. It is the badge, Jesus said. It is the badge of Christianity in John 13. Here it is. Above all. Now, here it is, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Look at this, by this shall all men know, because you go to church on Sunday morning. Is that what it says? By this shall all men know, because you carry your Bible. By this shall all, no, 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 no. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you love. That's it. God said, here's the badge, boom. <laughs> You know, you join the Marines, you get a uniform. You join the, you become a Husker, you wear red. You know, hey, Jesus said you become my follower. The uniform is love. Above all, have fervent love one for another. Look at this one in Proverbs 10, where God speaks to us again about love. Hatred stirs up strife. But love covers all sin. Is there some strife? Behind it, there's hatred. But love covers. In fact, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, he says, Lay aside all malice, all, chapter 2, verse 1, and grow, he says. He wants us to grow, to be like our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And love is practical. Verse 9, he says, Uh, be hospitable one to another without complaining. And so, fervently love one another. One more thing, one more thing, faithfully serve. You want to make the most of the rest of your life? Faithfully serve. I want you to see this verse, verse 10. Verse 10 says this, As each one has received a special gift, employ it in making a million dollars. Oh, I didn't read that right, did I? Is that what your Bible says? Oh, no. Oh, no. Employ your special gift in what? Serving one another. The God of this universe said, I gave you a gift. I gave you a special gift, a unique gift. You take that gift and you serve others with it. You have a special gift according to that verse. Verse 10. As each one has received a special gift. Each one, that's you, have received a special gift. Don't let the enemy tell you otherwise. You have a gift from God. You are uniquely gifted from God. Use it for God's glory and for others. Well, how do I find out what my gift is? Oh, I'm glad you asked. (laughs) We have base classes here. We have the ball diamond 101, 201, and 301. And at 301, we go through and help you to find your special gift that God has. And then not only do we help you to discover how God has uniquely gifted you and uniquely wired you together, then we try to help you to find a ministry that you can plug into so that you can use that gift in helping other people and serving other people.